Good morning. My name is Tiago Silva, and I will talk a bit about uh, political campaigns. This is part of my PhD research, and uh, the research question is how informative uh, are the unmediated electoral campaigns made on social media in comparison to traditional media, or if you want to frame it in a different way, to what extent is the agenda of traditional media hindering electoral competitors from producing more informative and less conflict-driven campaigns. So, oh, sorry. So the core concept of my research is the idea of media framing, this idea that the same one event can be presented in different ways. Journalists can highlight different aspect, aspects of these events, and my event is electoral campaigns. And what literature has been noticing is that when journalists report and talk about elections, they usually focus on the same aspects. These are strategy and the way parties campaign and the way they try to get electoral advantage. Horse race, that is this news about opinion polls and who's winning and losing, and also conflict, the attacks between these political actors. So why is this bad? But the most obvious reason is because then the news about the elections are less informative because they don't discuss substantive political issues, but also has some impact on the audiences and the effect. It has a, a negative impact on the audience's attitudes towards, towards politics. So it increases political cynicism. It means that uh, citizens will start trusting less on politicians and also reduces that sense of political efficacy. So the idea that it's important to vote and it matters to vote, so basically would decrease turnout. So this brings us the question, why this happened? Why are the journalists not talking about issues and are focusing on all other aspects? And there are two possible explanations. The first one is to blame the journalists, and most of the literature does that. Basically, some say that it's the journalist beliefs that are different from no ordinary citizens. They see politicians and someone that just wants to win. Uh, they don't care about uh, bringing solutions to, to, the, to citizens. This is not probably the best explanation because some research didn't find any difference between ordinary citizens and journalists regarding their attitudes towards politics. Other Reason might be these media routines. They want to, it's easier to report about horse race and strategy, and requires less work for them. That would would be more difficult for them to write about substantive political issues. And also, finally, is this transformation in media and this media logic and commercial logic, when stories are distorted to get attention and to sell journals rather than provide important information to the public. But can also be. That is politicians' fault. And basically, these mass marketing strategies that nowadays rule these actors might be having a negative impact on the content of their campaigns. Basically, the idea that parties avoid talking about issues basically because they don't want to alienate part of their electorate. So this can be because societies have more fragmented, more complex, and so it would be more damaging for them to raise some issues, can be that parties are becoming similar and there is less to distinguish themselves, so they don't talk so much about issues because basically they have the same position regarding them. Can be this also, it's more and more unpredictable for them to know what will happen, so they won't want to, to stick to the have some pledges that they cannot deliver. Of course, this doesn't apply to all uh, actors, yeah? Can be also some constraints. Basically, they don't have uh, capacity to do what they want because some, uh, some policies are like enforced or made come from uh, uh, supranational entities. Basically, it is you who would uh, force national governments to do something. So in that sense, they don't have this opportunity to, to do what they want, but they basically do what they are told to. Also, importance of money. This is more the case in some countries like US, where this pursuit for money drives their agenda, it pays a toll. So they don't have so much time to discuss issues, because they main, their main concern is just 
about getting money. And finally, also the uncertainty of the elections. Some studies showed that uh, when they are competitive, usually the actors talk more about issues, but when it's certain that they will win, they will just, they prefer to avoid them and focus on other aspects. So in this sense, the internet came as an opportunity for journalists to bypass the messenger and communicate directly to the public. And the, this is a, a perfect instrument for us in theory to see what politicians really want to convey during their campaigns. Do they want to talk about issues or they simply prefer to attack the opponents and they prefer to focus on the way they are campaigning and these aspects. There is, however, a problem because the internet is this poor medium that requires an effort from the audience to read and reach this information. So basically what happens with websites is mostly these supporters that go there and they are basically used to mobilize and recruit volunteers for other offline campaign strategies rather than inform about policies. They could do that with email. This is kind of, they can push the, the message to the audience. But the problem with email is that there are not good public mailing lists. And in, in result, they only get these people, these emails, these contacts of people that sign their newsletters or sign, go to the parties and give their information directly to the campaigns, which ends up being mostly supporters and sympathizers of these parties. So it's very good for mobilizing, but not really to inform and to campaign. Also, if they get the contacts of these people that are not supporters, it's also not good to send an email, these mass emails, because spam is a big thing and uh, people really don't like and they can have really negative attitudes towards this message from politicians. So. In that sense, the social media rise is an amazing opportunity as for politicians to convey the message directly to the public, to a large audience, but also diverse audience because it works as a two-step flow of communication where you share this political information in your network of friends. So in theory, it's not only supporters that this message will reach, but uh, can be also someone with different opinions uh, and different views. Of course, it's like this Costels has a good comparison, like campaigning on social media and in internet in general is like throwing a bottle, a message in a bottle to the ocean because we don't know who will pick it. And, but this uncertainty is in a good way is good because we can really see because they don't know who will get it. So they can be more genuine and really talk about what they feel important. They can use now internet to persuade, not only to mobilize. So what I did basically was to compare election campaigns made on uh, the social media with the with the news coverage of those same campaigns in order to test two sets of uh, competing hypotheses. The first set is an informative news if journalists are in fact distorting the campaigns in, in order to gain attention. Or, or the second hypothesis is all campaigns if parties don't really want to talk about issues. How I did it, basically content analysis of the press to newspapers of, and uh, the two, three social media, the Facebook, the Twitter, and YouTube. And the, the, for the duration of four weeks, I collected this data, and I old-fashionedly analyzed it manually. So everything was coded manually. It was more approach more for quant quality rather than quantity. And the, the elections that I looked at were, were the US election 2012, Italy in 2013, Brazil in 2014, and 2015, Portugal, so I don't have any juicy Trump uh, material. And uh, basically, this uh, serves two pro purposes. The first one is it shows the number of tweets, Facebook and YouTube videos that uh, the political actors posted in these four weeks before the election, and, and uh, we can see that they use quite a bit. All of them had the three different. Uh, we were using the three different social media, and they used it considerably. Except perhaps the Movimento Cinque Stelle, 
I, can, I think I had only seven videos because this party had their own 24-hour uh, online channel, so I guess YouTube was not that important for them. And uh, this also shows that campaigns on social media can be quite different. Yeah, they, like the parties and candidates use it for different purposes. Some of them can be very informative, like the Bloco de Esquerda, that the majority of their posts was to inform about the positions on the parties of substantive political issues, but can also be quite uninformative. Again, Movimento Cinque Stelle, and I will later talk what, about possible reasons for this. Yeah, I, I guess they are a bit obvious. But uh, strategy, some parties, like the uh, coalition of the incumbent parties in Portugal also focus most on these strategic aspects and much less on presenting the audience with substantive political issues. And finally, conflict. Some parties like uh, PDL, Que Popolo della Libertà in Italy, they had quite negative campaign on social media, while other parties like, or candidates like Dilma in Brazil, it was a quite low salience of conflict, which is very interesting because if you follow the, the election and if you follow traditional media, apparently Dilma was the devil only attacking the other candidates, but it doesn't reflect on social media. So in a way it's quite, don't get scared, I will skip this. Um, but basically the main message is that campaigns are can be quite different and use it for completely different purposes, either fundraising, finding volunteers, and talking about issues. These are not mutually exclusive, so is basically one post could refer to more than one category. But I, I know it's like it's not the best slide in the world. I'm so sorry about that. So about our hypothesis, what can we say about this added Traditional media really distorting the campaigns or are the parties avoiding issues? So this uh, table uh, presents us the, the, um, the results of a logistic regression analysis and basically what it shows is that the reference category is the press. So when uh, the number there is lower than one, it means that it's uh, less salient that topic on, uh, on each one of the social media. So basically this confirms our my uninformative uh, news hypothesis. All results are statistically significant. So basically strategy horse race is much, much more common, uh, likely to be used by journalists than, than the, the politicians. Issues are like also more likely, like the particularly in uh, YouTube, if you see, is almost uh, 2.5 times higher here. The, uh, YouTube is uh, 2.5 times more likely than uh, the press to deal with substantive political issues. Finally, conflict is also less salient on social media. And funny also, scandal is much, 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 much higher on the press. Like, in a way, it makes sense. I guess it's bad for everyone to talk about scandals. So definitely, in a way, uh, social media are a bit less, less um, negative in this aspect. So basically, these are good, good results in a sense. They are good for me because it made sense. I was afraid that maybe I would not find anything significant, but they are also good for democracy because it shows that these new media and these new platforms have the potential to originate more informative campaigns compared to the traditional media and what are people used to. Of course, of course there are like exceptions and there are also risks associated. I'm not clearly saying that, that this is negative, I'm, I have nothing against the Movimento Cinque Stelle, and uh, I don't want to offend anyone, that, but uh, there are some authors that say that social media and internet is this tailor-made platform for insurgent and populist parties, and w what we have been seeing is like, 
it has been partly proved in the case of Italy and the success of Movimento Cinque Stella, even though, as we saw before, they don't talk about issues, probably they don't want to alienate the electorate because they want to reach every single one of them. So the, it's more about like this populist message, us against them, and less about contact, but can be highly effective on, on the internet. Also some surprises is the Berlusconi's party, PDL, that it was a highly e efficient campaign. And uh, on social media, this party, in fact, surprisingly, discussed a lot about substantive political issues, even though it was also quite negative campaign. But basically, and media also referred to it as, even though Berlusconi was the only candidate that didn't have a, a, a Twitter account, but even though after the election he said that he would learn more internet. But uh, the PDL have, the, for the, have an approach, the media to say that they had a campaign, blast style campaign, that they used the comments and user-generated information to improve their speeches and improve their message. So even these parties that, like Berlusconi that uh, clearly have monopolized the conventional media and that be this expert in delivering this television message also are adapting to the to the new technologies and it can have quite effective results. He almost won the election, even though when it started the campaign, it was uh, nobody would expect that to have such an amazing result. Perhaps I'm not saying this, but it was related to this Howard Dean style of campaigning and how internet played a role in, the, in his campaign. But so. Basically, that's everything. I hope you understand, understood something. Thank you.